Hello everyone. In the previous chapter, we had been talking about the calculus of variations. And I had mentioned a number of things which the calculus of variations will enable us to do in this uh, entire course of advanced mechanics of solids, especially pertaining to the cases of beams and plates. Now, the way that we had proceeded in uh, discussing the few things in calculus of variations was quite abstract and mathematical. And uh, you may be wondering, and rightly so, that how could we possibly connect it to uh, things which are very much tangible and mechanical like beams and plates. So, the, uh, so what we are begin, uh, going to discuss um, today uh, is a new chapter called Energy Methods. And it is through this chapter that uh, the connection will be established between the mathematics that we discussed in the calculus of variations and the rest of this course. So this current chapter is an extremely, extremely important chapter acting as a bridge between the maths and the actual mechanical objects. All right, so without any further ado, let us go into some of the preliminary discussions. And again, you will see that in the preliminary uh, discussions, there will be a few things which may look a bit uh, mathematically abstract. Uh, but as I said, uh, we are going to establish a bridge between the maths and the real mechanical things. So uh, as you can imagine, uh, so the, the first uh, one side of the bridge has the connection with the maths. So that's, uh, that's how we start off. All right. So here are some preliminary concepts. Uh, the first concept has to do with the configuration. So we are going to define a few things here. Uh, the uh, configuration, uh, it is defined as the positions of all the material points of a mechanical system. So all, the, all these positions together, they are referred to as the configuration of the system. So uh, written in this fashion, uh, it may not make too much sense unless uh, you have a certain mathematical flavor in your brain. Uh, so, uh, so let's see if, we can, if I can, if I can uh, co concretize the ideas a little bit. So let me just switch on the uh, video again. Uh, and let's discuss this configuration definition. The positions of all the material points of a mechanical system are together referred to as the configuration of the system. So what do we mean by that really? Okay, so let us take the, uh, the, the example of a very simple mechanical system, uh, which is my hand. Okay. So my hand is like this here. So what we are going to say is that this is one particular configuration of my hand as it is. Okay, so what I mean by my hand is that just this part, okay, this entire thing. Okay, forget my face and everything else in this camera. Okay, so uh, this is one configuration. You can understand that if I change the position of my thumb like this, that is another configuration. If I put, uh, change the position of my thumb like this, that is another configuration. If I position uh, my fingers like this, uh, then that is another configuration. Furthermore, if I just keep it like this and uh, change it like this, change it like that. Okay, so all of them, all of these things, the various uh, configurations literally, okay, so uh, constituting the fact that in these different positions, the material points which make up my hand, the various material points which make up my hand, all these points, okay, including those in my thumb, my index finger, everything here. So as they are occupying different, different positions, each uh, of these things is one configuration. Okay, so, uh, uh, so uh, just, just, a, just a second, let me get, come back to this thing. Uh, you think about, uh, Another possibility where my thumb, you imagine that this part of my thumb is touching here. Now, some people can do that, but I cannot without breaking this joint here. So, uh, question is whether that would be considered part of this mechanical system, okay, or, or whether that, that configuration would be an acceptable one. Now, if you allow for the fact that this mechanical system of my hand is allowed to be broken at this joint, then certainly that configuration is also an acceptable one. 
okay otherwise not okay so this little discussion that we had at the end that will have some consequences in the in our future discussions also so please remember that okay so uh, let me get back to the definitions continuing next we have configuration space so uh, uh, just as i had told you that one particular mechanical system can have very many different configurations so uh, the configuration space is basically uh, just the set of all the very many different configurations that can be taken by the mechanical system okay that's what it is okay so not much to discuss here uh, next this is where it becomes a little bit abstract mathematically the geometric notation okay so uh, uh, so let me just discuss this uh, so any point in the configuration space of a mechanical system is denoted by x now please do not get confused by this notation x which back in applied elasticity we had used to refer to uh, the position of a particular material point this x does not refer to the position vector of a particular material point no it refers this x it subsumes within it the entire representation of the configuration so for example if i switch back my uh, video here if i hold my hand like this the entire representation of all the material points okay that entire representation all the material points that would just be represented by this by that variable x if i change it that will be another x okay so uh, so it is not pertaining to any one particular material point here 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 also it is constituting everything okay all right so uh, uh, in order to understand this one may think of the simplest of mechanical systems which is just one particle then of course we can say that because in that particle there is only one material point then x can be the position vector of the particle but if it is constituting of a fairly complicated system like my hand then x is certainly not the position vector is not mind you again i emphasize this x is not the position vector of any one point on my hand x is the uh, entire representation of all the material points that is present in one particular configuration okay uh, next to continue uh, we have another concept which is uh, the distance in configuration space okay so what is this so when a mechanical system goes from one configuration uh, say we represent it by uh, the variable x not in configuration space to another configuration say x1 in configuration space then the distance between x not and x1 is defined to be the maximum of the displacement magnitudes of the individual particles making up the system so what what do we mean by that okay so let me again switch on the video here so here again this is one particular configuration of my hand this is represented by let's say x not now this is another configuration of my hand let's say this is x1 now uh, i wish i could show you on the camera two uh, two different copies of my right hand but i can't do that so you just use your imagination a little bit now uh, all that i'm changing is the position of my thumb like this so this is x0 and this is x1 okay and i'm talking about my entire hand now so what we'll say is that uh, the distance between this x0 this entire configuration x0 and this configuration which is x1 that will be defined by the maximum of the displacement magnitudes of all the material points considered so if you for example if you consider the, the this thing the material point at the tip of my little finger then that is not changing at all between x0 and x1 so that that is zero that difference is zero okay so the displacement there is zero suppose you considered the material point which is at the middle point of my thumb so it is going from here to here it was x not here this is x1 so if you consider the the displacement magnitude of the middle part of my thumb that will have a certain value but the displacement magnitude of the tip of my thumb between x not and x1 
will have a higher value as you can understand from this configuration okay so of all the of all the different uh, uh, displacement magnitudes that are possible between two different configurations the one that has the maximum value that will be referred to as the distance between x0 and x1 okay so this is a very subtle thing to understand i hope there is no such there is no confusion the next point uh, is even more subtle okay and i deliberately did not write it uh, earlier i want to uh, write i mean discuss it as we go along okay so this is a path in configuration space okay so the path in configuration space what do we mean by that well uh, you think of it like this first of all we say that the configuration of a mechanical system the configuration x okay the configuration x of a mechanical system so i will not write too many words here rather i'll just describe it all the words the formal words that are present that will be present in the lecture notes uh, you can go through them at your leisure later on uh, let let me just first discuss the concept okay so we considered this x representing the per a particular configuration uh, of a mechanical system and we say that this x is a function of some variable t bar okay this is some scalar variable t bar please note that right away you don't you don't uh, uh, think that this t bar is necessarily time it could be it could not be we'll discuss that a little bit later but for now you just think that this configuration uh, x uh, it 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 is a, a function of some scalar variable t bar and let's say that uh, this t bar is such that it is uh, lying between uh, two things okay so this is just a, a way to represent completely in a mathematical fashion so we say that this uh, x is a function of t bar if to each point t bar that is lying between a and b if we have a uh, a particular value of x okay so i repeat so if to each value t bar lying between a and b we have a value of x then we say that x is a function of t bar now uh, the uh, the function uh, so formed uh, what we'll say is that this uh, so as you can understand so as we keep on changing t bar this x will also change and every time this x changes it will represent a different configuration in configuration space going by all our discussions earlier now uh, this function so formed it uh, what we'll say is that it represents a path in configuration space okay so this function it represents a path in configuration space but please do not jump to conclusions just uh, from the moment you see the word path okay we have to qualify this uh, properly so this function represents a path path in configuration space but very importantly we have to note that every path that we may think of okay every path uh, may not be admissible okay it may not be allowed and we'll discuss this properly okay so every path may not be admissible because of the constraints present in the mechanical system okay so because of the constraints we must always always have to we always have to respect the constraints of the mechanical system and because those constraints may be present not every part that you may think of may be admissible okay so what do we mean by that so for that uh, let me see if i can uh,
if I can give you some sort of a concrete example. So again, let me switch on the video. Okay, so this time we'll consider a slightly more complicated situation. So we'll consider my hand like this, my right hand like this, and I will also consider my left hand. But before doing that, I will place a bottle cap in my right hand. Okay. And my left hand is like this. Okay. So this is an artificially contrived example, but I hope it will help you to clarify the ideas. So uh, you understand that my right hand, my left hand, and the bottle cap which is present here, this one, this bottle cap, this together constitute, constitute the mechanical system. Okay, all these things, the right hand, the left hand, and the bottle cap together, they are, referred, they are our mechanical system of interest. And you also understand that gravity is very much acting. You forget my face, my, my sweater, and all this background and everything. Just, just uh, think of this thing. And the constraint, okay, the constraint that we impose on this thing is that all of this, this right hand, this left hand, and the bottle cap, it must be uh, present within the field view of this camera. I told you this is an artificially contrived example, but this is, this is how, we, how we choose our mechanical system. So it must be always present in the field view of this camera. So this is not acceptable, okay? Because my right hand has now gone away from the field view of the camera. Okay, so I always have to maintain it like this, okay? Now let us say that we want to consider different, different configurations of this mechanical system that we have chosen. Okay, so another configuration that could be possible is that this bottle cap goes from my right hand to my left hand, like this. Okay, just a simple transfer. So this is another configuration of the mechanical system that I have chosen. Now you see what I have done in the process. Let me repeat it. I was holding it like this. I, ho I held it like this. So this intermediate positions of my hands, this also represents a configuration of our mechanical system. Okay, you think about it very carefully. Now I'm moving my hands slowly. So each of these, each of these little, little, uh, uh, each of these uh, little increments that I'm, I'm showing you, they, all of these intermediate configurations, they are very much configurations of the mechanical system and they are all respecting the constraints that we have imposed that all throughout this thing starting from here to here all these intermediate positions i am respecting the constraints of my mechanical system which is that everything should be present in the field view of the camera and i am slowly uh, putting it in my left hand and i am bringing my hand back here okay so all the things, all the all the configurations, okay, all the configurations that have taken place in this transfer, they together constitute a path. It's a path because we have respected the constraints of the system. But suppose let us go back to the initial configuration like this. And suppose what I do is I just uh, I just leave my thumb like this and let it fall. So I don't want to make it dirty. Okay, so I'll just drop it like this. Imagine that I have dropped it. Now you see, some problem has happened. Because I left my thumb like that and let it drop. Okay, I did not actually show you the dropping because I didn't want it to fall on the floor. I just kept it in my on my chair here. But uh, what has happened is that gravity has very much acted uh, on this thing. And the cap is now uh, down below. Now, if I say that I want to have the bottle cap transferred to my left hand, okay, that is problematic because in order to achieve that, I have to move either of my hands away from the field view of the camera, but that is not respecting the constraints of the system, which is that everything should be present within the, uh, within the field view of the camera. In fact, I have already violated so the, the, the moment after I, I let go of the bottle cap, I've already violated the constraints of the system, which is that the, the bottle cap very much was part of my mechanical system and that has now also disappeared from the field view of the camera. So this intermediate position 
like the bottle cap is lying on my chair okay uh, in my lap and although these two hands are there in the field view of the camera but the bottle cap is not so it is so this intermediate configuration so to speak uh, is not an admissible configuration okay this particular configuration with the bottle cap lying in my lap away from the field view of the camera and even though these two hands may be present in the field view of the camera this is not an admissible configuration because you have already violated the constraints of the system okay so even if i now claim that no okay no problem i'll just pick it up and put it in my left hand okay so you think you see under uh, you see what has happened i let go of this bottle cap it fell here and then i just came down here put it back in my left hand but if you claim that this entire motion this thing falling down and then my hand going away from the field view of the camera picking it up and putting it back here that is a path of the of the of the mechanical system then that is untrue that is false that is not an acceptable that's not an admissible path i mean you can say that there is a path but it is not an admissible path because it is violating the constraints of the system so i hope with this little example some ideas will be concretized in your brain okay so uh, one very very important notion before i end this video is that uh, this variable t that we were talking about it's uh, it's quite an abstract thing uh, so uh, and and you will understand why we have to write it like this t bar in in the in the next part of the in the, or in the next video uh, for now you just note that this uh, variable t bar okay this uh, variable t bar is not necessarily the time if if it is indeed the time if it is indeed the time then the then this function x of t bar where t bar is equal to t the time is uh, called the motion of the system okay so such a special path uh, it is called the motion of the system okay so the motion of the system is a special case of the path when this scalar variable t bar happens to be the time okay so that is something we are all familiar with when we say we uh, this okay so one one mechanical system is going from one point to another point through a certain path what we really uh, what we really mean uh, in these terms is that uh, we are we are describing the motion of the system okay so this difference between the t bar and the t that will become more evident uh, clear uh, in the next video where we are going to discuss about virtual displacements all right with this i end this video thank you very much